Hello, I'm Eric Snodgrass, and thank you for watching this Ag Forecast for South America, brought to you by Nutrient Ag Solutions. We look back over the last week, we were paying a close attention to a frontal boundary that was going to be coming through parts of Argentina and then eventually bringing in the first decent rainfall for parts of southern Brazil from uh, Rio Grande do Sul through Seta Canarina and into um, Parana. You do notice here that southern Mato Grosso do Sul and western this region right into your western Parna, that's a large area. Uh, this is an area that was largely missed by this rainfall. In fact, if I just kind of put a circle around it, you could fit Iowa inside of that. So there's a region in through here, very productive ground that was missed. Heavier rainfalls to the north in Mato Grosso do Sul, and then southern Mato Grosso, and then this part of Goyas. But outside of that, uh, a lot of drier conditions are in place. If we just take a look at when that rainfall came through, let's watch an animation over the last week. So we're getting here through the 19th now and into the 20th. And you're going to see the frontal boundary advancing to the north. There it is. And the rainfall over the weekend. But outside of that, if a region missed that rainfall, things are still looking pretty rough. And let's just go take a closer look at what's going on here. I want to give you the updated map here from the um, uh, CHIRPS. This would be the SPI. It's a, it's a drought indicator. Uh, we're looking at drought severity from April 21st through May 20th. And just a couple of things to take note of here. Um, the regions we've been watching most carefully right in through here, um, possibly record driest in that area looking at the CHIRPS data set. So this is a region that needed more precipitation than what was delivered as of late. And if I just scroll up here, uh, we can look at the two-month averages. And again, we continue to see the stress in southern Brazil um, showing up very well here on these two maps. I did an NDVI analysis last week. I just want to do it a little differently this week. We're going to use the USDA's data here, which again comes from the same sources, uh, but they have a, a time history on it I'd like to share with you. Uh, so Mato Grosso, right in through here, of course, this would be our biggest producing state for the Safrina crop. If we just take a quicker look at what is going on there, um, above average NDVI values at this point. And a lot of that might be coming from the later planted crop. So it's, it's uh, greener later into the season, but it's almost matching where we were a year ago. Uh, so the crop looks better farther to the north. And that is not to say there aren't patches of drought in Mato Grosso, but overall from the NDVI analysis, that's what we've got. If we come back here and maybe go a little bit farther to the south, let's go there to Mato Grosso do Sol here. And we take a look at their NDVI graphic. It is well below average by almost uh, six percentage points here overall, or not percentage points, excuse me. The NDVI value is six points lower uh, than it was um, compared to average. And let's just check in on one lo more location. So let's go back again and head down to Parana. That's the other place we've been quite concerned about. We see a very similar pattern there as well. So the 2021 values, again, these colors here, are well below the historical average. So that's the area that we've been watching for the most stress. Now looking forward in the forecast, a big piece of what's going on is the Antarctic Oscillation is now going down here uh, to almost three standard deviations below average. And what this is going to do is, and that effect is increase the, the frequency of troughs moving through the, the, the westerlies in the southern hemisphere. That's a, a part of what the negative AAO does. So let's take a look at what that's going to do as it starts to have its recovery getting into the beginning of June. Okay, so we're looking here at precipitation and we're looking at pressure, essentially. And as we play this forward, we're going to get through Wednesday, even out here toward Thursday, where at best we get some scattered showers over here, you know, this uh, Minas Gerais, this area. And outside of that very, very dry week for both Argentina uh, and, and Brazil, the majority of Brazil. When does the moisture start to return? Well, there's a larger load that's cutting through southern Argentina by the end of this week. And so once again, it's going to be a late week and weekend chance at rainfall. See it here? As the main front comes out of these lows that are now in the Atlantic, slides through parts of southern Brazil. Much of the rest of the Brazil, uh, Brazil is very dry going through the weekend and even into early next week. So there seems to be a boundary setting up right here as each of these troughs, one, two, three, four, go sliding in the westerlies down here. And as a result, we have um, better chances at rainfall in this region. If we kind of just stack this all up and put it together, this is total accumulated precip through uh, the next seven days. So you do notice that the majority of the safrina crop is going to be very dry 
And this rainfall that's coming in through here is coming again late this week, Friday into Saturday. But the potential there for better than 30 to 50 millimeters exists with some of these storms. The big question will be, do they hit the driest regions of Parana and Mato Grosso do Sol? And even if it does bring in the rainfall, is it just not enough to revive a crop that's had so much stress uh, throughout March, April, and now May? Into week two, as we finish this up, the latest European update, very consistent with last week's performance, suggesting that we'll watch this area for better chances at rainfall, but north of that, very dry, and south of it, very dry as well. So the late-planted safrina crop um, uh, continues to see some stress here, and even though rains do move through parts of southern Brazil, the damage that was done earlier in the season has shown up in the NDVI imagery, and we've got some... Uh, report system scouts down there that uh, there are pockets where the crop uh, is really suffering due to the conditions we've seen here. So I wanted to report that to you and uh, look forward to giving another update on South America on Thursday. We'll talk to you then. Thanks.